Hi guys, it's Nancy and I'm back with another new release from Catherine Puller Designs. This is the February release and I am mixing and matching a couple things here. The whole design is called the At Home Collection and we have two stamp sets here. This one is called the Moments in Time Sentiment Stamp Set and you can see there's some really cool large font um, time, moments, occasion, and then for the simple font, this is your time, cherish the time, live for the moments, um, uh, how about cherish the time together, cherish the time with you, cherish the moments with you, thankful for our moments, thankful for our time, savor this special, let's celebrate this, and congrats on this happy occasion. I believe there's also a moments in time die set, which will cut out the time, moments, and occasion. I don't happen to have that with me yet. And then this kind of cool abstract set is called Bold Bits and Patterns. And I got to tell you guys, I have had, as you can tell, a lot of fun playing with this stamp set. So you're going to see quite a few videos from me on this. But I wanted to do something rather simple to start out with. So we're going to grab a piece of um, Catherine Pooler white cardstock. This is the premium cardstock, 100 pound. And I already have it cut down and I pulled a piece out so here we go and then I also have the waffle flower mini blending mat and I have a couple of the Catherine Polar smaller blending brushes and we're just gonna stick this down I find myself using this mat for almost everything because everything is kind of like non-stick when it's on it so it makes it a little bit easier um, but yeah and then I have a couple colors here I have the new oh boy something borrowed and suede shoes and then I have limoncello tiki torch and flame and something else I wanted to bring up if you have not tried these awesome amazing Catherine Pooler inks they do have minis available and for those of you guys that have been waiting for the minis to come out for the date night collection they are also going to be released so you can get the eight pack of minis of the date nights um, those are also going to be released in February as well. So I know I started off with the minis. I love the minis. They're very space saving. You get the same ink pad, the same ink. Um, but I obviously I do a lot of stamping. So I moved up from the minis to the full size, but I think minis are a great option. All right. So I'm going to just start off by getting this piece of fuzz off my paper here. Um, we're going to do what Nancy likes to do, which is kind of a sunset scene, right? So we're going to start with, I think I'm going to grab a little piece of like masking tape here, post-it tape. Do I have any post-it tape? I think I'm out of post-it tape. Okay, we're going to use this. Not my favorite, but we'll use it. Um, yeah, about... Out there about a quarter of a way up on your paper no maybe a little higher maybe a little more maybe we'll go up about a third and you kind of want to make sure that's straight all right so that's gonna be our horizon line and I'm gonna start with the it doesn't matter what you start with but I'm gonna start with the yellow which is limoncello and I'm just gonna go with my blending brush And I'll make sure that's pretty well saturated. I did just recently re-ink this ink pad, so it's pushing that ink, ink down into the ink pad too. All right, and I'm just gonna go from the horizon, circular motions, and work my way up. Now that I'm looking at this, I do think it's too high. I think I need to come down. <clears throat> Change my mind, which I'm allowed to do as a crafter. Although, now that there's a line, that might not work out to my favor. We're gonna keep going. If we don't like it, we can change it later. Because since there's already a line blended there, it might not uh, blend so smoothly when I go to change it. So we're gonna leave it. Okay, so that's limoncello. It's a nice bright yellow. 
Now we're going to move into Tiki Torch, which is our next color. And again, you can see that freshly re-inked ink pad. So I'm just going to use my blending brush to pick up some of that color that is way too much. We're going to tap some of that off. And start from the top and then gently blending that down. All right, I'm gonna go back to what I said before. See, this is why I don't edit so you guys can see my mistakes and how much I change my mind. My tiki torch took over my limoncello. It's too bright. And take, picking up that excess ink over here off the side of the pad too. That's okay, it'll all turn out good, I promise. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a straight, straight line of blending, I'm just trying to just kind of have my reference point with the horizon. And this paper is really smooth, so it's really nice for blending like this. Again, just going to kind of carry it down here. I'm going to smudge out that original horizon line I had. All right, I'm going to bring Limoncello back to the party. And we're going to blend it back in on the bottom here. And I've changed to the lighter color brush. I was using this other brush. And these do, they're dye ink, so they soak into the paper. And as they go into the paper, they do lighten just a little bit. They, they dry back a little bit. So you'll see as this starts to dry, not only will it lighten a little bit, but they'll blend together a lot nicer. They'll smooth themselves out. All right, that looks really good. And just for a little touch of darkness, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of flame. I'm gonna go back to using the, the same color, or same brush I was using for the Tiki Torch with flame. Okay, and I'm gonna use very little flame, just a just a tiny smidge of flame just on the top here, just to darken this. And again, like I said, when you when this starts to dry back, you'll see that everything blends pretty smoothly. And that's what's great about these inks is they coordinate nicely, they blend smoothly, they're great for stamping, they're great for background techniques, they are water reactive, so there's a lot of cool things you can do with these stamps, or these inks, sorry, so you don't need to buy three, four, five different kinds of inks to get what you get with these. And I just tap off a little bit and then I go back and pick that up. So there's no real harsh lines. I'm kind of just adding a little bit at a time here and then blending it in and darkening it and getting this kind of ombre sunset look. And the flame is a nice addition because it's a really, almost like a burnt orange, dark reddish orange color. So you can see how just adding that, just adding it to the top corners really. Okay, that looks really good. I'm really happy with that one, okay. Okay, so now we need to work on our water because you know it's winter time here in Pennsylvania and it's like 20 degrees out. So I'm thinking about the beach. Before I go into water, I'm gonna clean my mat off. Just gonna spray a little bit of stamp cleaner on there. And just take a rag and wipe it up. Maybe more stamp cleaner. It didn't come out so well, there we go. And you can see how reactive that ink is. So if you wanted to do ink smushing 
or watercoloring or any kind of those techniques, you could definitely do those. And I just use a microfiber towel, wipe it down. All right. Wow, that's really pretty. Okay, I'm very impressed with myself on that. Sometimes you got to pat yourself on the back when you do something well because I'm so used to screwing up, you know. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go in and we're going to do our water. And with the water, we're going to do the same technique, but we're going to use a couple different colors of ink here. So we're going to start with, oh boy. Oh boy, my tape is not staying down. And same concept. I'm going to go in with my blending brush and just going to blend that color down. Now, this is always going to happen. You're going to get that kind of splotchy look when you're blending. The secret is to keep going. Don't give up. The more ink you add, the more saturated your paper gets with color, the easier it is to blend. I do kind of want to make sure that... And sometimes it could be the paper you're using too. If you're using a paper that's very textured, it's gonna be harder to get some of those blending marks out. So you wanna use an ultra smooth paper and you wanna to continue to add ink and you'll see, like I said, those blending marks will start to come out. They'll fade away because as you're adding ink, you're covering over them. And since I'm gonna be adding darker and darker colors here, I'm not really too concerned with it. This is just my first layer of color. And since this is my ocean, it's okay. It's, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth anyway. It's unrealistic then. All right, so that's my first layer of oh boy. Now I'm gonna come in with something borrowed, which is a little bit darker blue, and I'm gonna use the same blending brush. And you see how much darker that is? So I'm tapping that off. And again, just kind of bring that in and blend over. And you can already see how it's smoothing out some of the marks from the first layer. And your blending is really up to you. If you want really deep, dark, saturated colors, keep going, keep adding more ink. If you want soft pastel colors, then just use less ink. Use a softer hand when you're doing your blending. Um, that's basically what the difference is. If you have somebody's blending that you really enjoy watching, like how do they get that seamless kind of blend, you'll see that a lot of people really work their blending in. I mean, it's kind of like kneading dough. The, the more you knead it, right, the better it's going to be. So it's the same kind of thing. You want to continue to work that until it's where you expect it to be. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of this something borrowed and I'm just basically going to go around the edges. So I want the center to be a little bit lighter blue and the edges to be a darker blue. Kind of like I did with the flame up top where the flame was on the top and the center was a little bit lighter. And again, just picking up all that excess ink off of the mat and using it back into my image here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So believe it or not, guys, that's pretty much the background of the card. Look at that reveal, how pretty that is. Isn't that nice? Okay, that's how wonderful these inks are. I'm gonna clean my mat again. Let me move my panel all the way here. And now I'm gonna do some stamping. Now, I know some of you are saying, how are you stamping that, Nance? You don't have sunset stamps. You're right, I don't. But remember, it's a very abstract stamp set. So it's real simple. I'm going to grab this, and this is going to be our sun. And going to bring back in my little piece of post-it tape here. I think this is actually mint tape. So you can see it's lost its stick already. Not my favorite. And Catherine Puller block. I 
and I'm going to grab my Tiki Torch ink, ink that up, and I'm really just kind of inking up the top part of it. And when I stamp this, I'm going to stamp it on this non-stick tape, which I don't like, but that's all I have. <laughs> okay, so we're going to make sure that this sun is kind of in the middle there, halfway down on the post-it tape, halfway into the center of our sky. We really want to press down there. There we have our sun. Okay. And the other part is I just want to add my sentiments. Like I said, you guys, this was going to be really simple. And I wanted to put um, thankful for our moments. So I'm going to grab those out. This is a really quick and easy card you can make for someone just to let them know you're thinking about them, you know, that you appreciate them. Really easy and simple to do. Okay, so that's all going to fit just fine. I'm going to use this larger Catherine Fuller block for moments. I kind of want to make sure it's mostly straight on the block. Looks good there. And I'm going to bring in suede shoes, which is a little bit darker blue. Another tip is when you have brand new stamps that you haven't stamped out a few times, you might want to bring a piece of scrap paper in and stamp them out because sometimes the ink beads up until you get a nice smooth stamp. So you want to make sure that you just practice stamping those off a few times before you bring them directly to your project. Okay, and I want this mostly in the middle. This um, waffle flower mat does great for stamping because it also gives you a little bit of give. So with these photopolymer stamps, it's perfect. Okay. the new the new larger round block from Catherine Puller. If you love the round blocks like I do, you had to have this one. Perfect. Right on the grid line there. And I do want to practice stamping this one off as well. Great. Perfect. Now, the last thing that I do just to have this pop a little bit more is in this um, mold bits and patterns, there are some waves here. So I thought adding those into the water would be cool just to give it something else to look for. And there's these kind of straight lines. Again, it's designed to be very abstract, very fun. And I'm going to go in with the lightest color, which is old. Oh, not old boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> and it'll just be real subtle tone on tone. Gives it more of the ocean feel. And like I said, it will dry back a little bit. So if it's too light, like if you think that's way too light, you can go in with suede shoes or um, something borrowed and kind of have a little contrast there. Let me do suede, something borrowed. So 
You can see it's a little bit darker if you want that. And it will dry back a little bit. So there we go, we have some waves in our water, we have our sunset, we have our wonderful sentiment. I'm gonna add a little bit more with the waves here because I think that that old oh boy is kind of fading out a little bit. And like I said, there's no right or wrong way. It's your imagination on how you want to use these. Now I have a more distinctive kind of uh, horizon. And then I would just mount that to a card front, which I have right here. Oh, by the way, this is five and a half by four and a quarter. don't have to go all out and do, you know, fancy. Sometimes the simplest cards are the best. And there we go. Nice, beautiful sunset card doing some ink blending with the Catherine Puller inks and the Catherine Puller mini brushes and then using the brand two brand new stamp sets the um bold bits and patterns and the moments and time sentiments let me know what you think do you enjoy the sunset theme comment down below and i'll put a link to everything i use in the description for you guys i do appreciate when you use my affiliate links it does give me a small commission and it lets katherine pooler know where you found out about these products so thanks for watching guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up keep on stamping bye